no problem. Okay, so we did a quick review of multiplying out and a basic factoring. This is the kind of factoring we did in grade 10, where when you multiply things out, you multiply the first one, the outside, the inside, the last. That basically shows all of the arrows. But a pattern happens when factoring that your first ones always end up here, your last ones end up here. Okay? Some other things for factoring as that will be helpful. For factoring is before you go into any kind of factor factoring, the most common thing to do is to look for a common factor. That's when there is something in each term. So for example, in this first one, where we have 3a squared minus 6a minus 24, if I look at all of the terms, I notice that 3 divides each of those terms. So I can factor out the common factor of 3, which would leave me with a squared minus 2a minus 8. And then I have a trinomial. So I can ask myself, well, maybe this can be factored further. If it can be factored further, those would be the ones that are first. These are the ones that are last, and my outside and my inside have to combine to give me minus 2. So if I was looking at that, well, I have an a squared. Can you see that the only possibility would be a and a? But when I get to negative 8, I have options. 8 and 1 or 4 and 2. So I have to think about my inside and my outside have to give me negative 2. Can you see right away that 8 and 1 will never work? But 4 and 2, so if I use 4 and 2, I'd have 4a and 2a. That could make minus 2. Yeah, so there's, there's 100 percent? 100 percent. But to make a minus 2, do we see that the 4a, that would have to be the negative, and the 2a, positive. Do a quick check. If I multiply this out, do my first ones give me a squared? Do my last ones give me negative 8? Yes, they do. And my outside and in inside, we just checked that, gives me negative 2. So this one is factored completely. Okay? We'll identify perfect square trinomials and differences of squares in the end, and what they are, okay? Second one, we have 3c squared plus 7c plus 4. So, 3c squared plus 7c plus 4. I always check, is there a common factor in all three of them? In this case, no. So then, I go to my brackets. Just this would have to be my first ones, this would have to be my last ones, and these would have to be my outside and inside. Now, this is a more complicated one because it has a 3 in front. And in grade 10, most likely you were taught a technique to deal with these more complicated ones. Feel free to use that technique again, but if you've forgotten it, Obviously, it wasn't very helpful for you. So, you can still use this. This strategy will always work for you. Sometimes it just might take a little bit longer. Okay? And sometimes, if you're unsure, you just try something to find out what doesn't work, and it gives you a hint as to what will work. Now, in this case, this one's actually not too bad to figure out, because when I look at my first one, I have a 3c squared. Do you see that there's only one option for that? It has to be 3c and c. And it wouldn't matter if I wrote the c first and the 3c second. That would be identical. Do you see that that doesn't matter? Okay. Now my last one, I have options. I'm going to draw my outside and my inside 
right away. Okay, can you see that your options are four and one or two and two? Okay, if you choose the two and two, my inside would be two C, my outside would be six C. Does six C and two C ever add or subtract to give me seven? No. So then I know it's going to be four and one. But the interesting thing about this example is if I put my 4 over here and my 1 here, what's my outside? 12. My inside, 1. 12 and 1 never makes a 7. But if instead I put my 1 here and my 4 there, now what's my outside is 3C and my inside is 4C. So you see, sometimes by even writing down something that I'm not sure, I'm just going to try something and check it, you're going to find out, oh, it didn't work, but it can give you a hint as to what might work. Now we need a plus 7C, so I would need a positive 3C and a positive 4C. Again, I now know that my outside and inside work. Check your last one, 4 times 1, positive 4, yep. Check your first one. 3c times c, 3c squared. Perfect. So now we know the nice thing about this technique is not only do you factor it, but because you check it afterwards, you know that you are correct. And you've got the x1. Okay? Third example. Try, okay, before you try this one on your own, Can you see that it has a common factor? Something to always check first. They all have a 2. So I can factor out that 2, leaving me with x squared minus x minus 6. See how you did? For the first one, only option would be x and x. I think about my outside and inside, and I look at 6. 6 could be 3 and 2, or 1 and 6. The only way to get a minus 1 is if I chose a 3 and a 2. I Sorry for the interruption. Teachers, can I have the semester 1 hockey students down to the lobby to leave? Semester 1 hockey students to the lobby, please. So I would need a minus 3x plus 2x to give me minus 1x. A quick check, do my last ones work? They do. My first ones work, so we are done. Okay. 9b squared plus 12b. This one is hard. This one is hard because for the first one, 9b squared, there's 9 and 1 makes 9, and 3 and 3 makes 9. Okay? For the last
last one, it's either 1 and 4 or 2 and 2. You notice how all the time I've always started with the first one? The reason I always started with the first one is because there was only one option. If there's only one option, start with that one. If there's more than one option, as in this case with the first one, then I check my last one. Sometimes your first one has more than one option, but your last one only has one option. If your last one only has one option, put it down first, and then you'll probably figure out what the first one has to be. But since this one, first one has two options, and the last one has two options, we could be in trouble. Okay? If we're in trouble, like this, with this technique, is pick one. Green, three, or nine, and one. I didn't think three, or six. Which one do you want to do? Nine and one? Okay. So, if you chose nine and one, so we got nine B and one B. You do your outside and your inside, and you think it's either going to be four and one or two and two. Let's start with two and two because the numbers are the same. If you put two here and two here, you see your outside's 18, your inside's two. Will that ever get you 12? No. So then you got four and one. But with the four and one, it's going to be different if it's four and one here or four and one here. If the four is on the outside, you have 36 and one. That's not going to work. If I put the four on the inside, I'm going to have nine and four. Does nine and four give us 12? Oh, it's 13. So close. So what we did is we tried nine and one, <coughs> and we went through all of the options, and you had a 50-50 chance of choosing the right one, and you didn't. So you went through the options, and nine and one didn't work, so then you erase it and say, well, oops. Then it has to be three and three. We'll try that. We still have options with the four. It's either two and two or four and four. Okay, which one do you want to try first? Four and one. So if we try the four and the one here, then my outside is three and my inside is 12. Does 12 and three make 12 ever? No. Can you see that the four and one switched wouldn't make a difference in this one? Because these are the same. So once again, you did a very good job of guessing the wrong one first, which isn't bad. What's the problem with guessing the wrong one first? Only problem is it takes longer. Okay? So now we'll try two and two. Can you see that your outside is 60? Your inside is 60. Does six and six ever make 12? Yes. And they would have to be both positive. So we got 3b plus 2 times 3b plus 2. And this is called a perfect square trinomial. Because the answer ends up being 3b plus 2 squared. Just a shortcut hint in this unit. This unit has talked about perfect square trinomials. So one thing to notice is if the first number, 9, is 3 times 3, a perfect square. And the last number, 4, is 2 times 2, a perfect square. If I was picking ones to start, I would pick the ones that are the same, just because you're like, I think this unit might test me that a little bit more often, because they gave me that name. Not guaranteed, but in this case, it seems to be like, oh, if I've got the 9 and the 4, I'm going to try that first as a way to check. Oh, this is good review of factoring. Hey, okay. um, factoring, probably of all your math skills, most important from grade 9, 10, 11, and 12, is something you use the most in all of your classes. Means we are going to factor a lot. So get really, really good at it. Practice a lot. Okay, we've got two left. The bell's going to go soon. We've got 2g squared minus g minus 3. Again, no common factor. Two g 
squared is e, it has to be 2g and g. I think about my outside and my inside. Minus 3. It could be 3 and 1 or 1 and 3. And you see in this situation, if you did the 3 on the outside, that would give me 6 and 1. That doesn't give me 1. But if I do the 3 on the inside, 3 and 1 that way, I've got 3 and 2. That can give me a minus 1. If my 3 is negative, then my 1 is positive.